So I'm going to talk about CTO crossing techniques. These are my disclosures. So we all know with the explosion of diabetes and CKD, we're dealing with a lot of complex subsets of things, right? We've got big artery disease. We've got sad or small artery disease. We've got multi-level CTOs. Obviously, with a predominance of blown knee and blow ankle disease, which is what we're seeing more and more. And as you've seen these live cases, you're seeing this as well. But we're also dealing with heavy, heavy calcification. Not only intimal calcification, but MAC or medial arterial calcification, which we all know is a big problem. It's all that railroad track calcification you see either under fluoroscopy or, or when you're looking at a foot x-ray. And obviously, all these things are leading to really multi-level CTOs, which have really become complex. I think there's been a lot of various algorithms that have been published over the years. You know, Dr. Roy published an algorithm trying to show you that based on plaque characterization and plaque morphology, that this is the type of catheter, the guide wire, this is how you should approach it, and so forth. And obviously, Dr. Banerjee and their group at TCT published, you know, their PCTO working group algorithm on how best to cross a CTO. And I think the more, the more probably popular or common one is obviously looking at cat morphology. I think the CTOP classification, I think Fadi and Jihad really kind of showed us kind of their way of, of doing things and, and how best to approach it and how that determines whether our access is anti-grade, retrograde, or dual. But the problem is this, is that I think all of us that do this know that there's really no perfect algorithm in terms of crossing a CTO. So I'm going to go over some quick basics so that Eric can then get into kind of some stuff related to what are some good treatment algorithms. So, you know, these are kind of the important considerations or things that I think that are important when you're trying to cross a really complex CTO. I think imaging is key, you know, whether it's ultrasound, CT, obviously angiography. I think cap morphology makes a difference. That makes a difference in terms of whether you're going to approach it from above, from below, whether you need dual access. Obviously, the degree and location of calcification is, is important because that also determines your approach, whether you're more likely to be intraluminal or subintimal or subadventitial, as we saw in one of the earlier live cases. Obviously, the location of collaterals is important. You don't want to burn any some of these collaterals that are important in terms of the runoff. Uh, vessel size makes a difference. Obviously, if you're trying to recanalize from a larger vessel into a smaller one that's, say, one or two millimeters in diameter, that's a very tough recanalization. And then access options, single, dual, and, uh, you know, where are your points of access, whether it's radial, et cetera. So when it comes to access, remember, we always talk about retrograde up and over and so forth. But, you know, I will tell you when you're dealing with below knee and below ankle disease, and, and sometimes with complex distal SFA and pop occlusions, you can do anti-grade access. I think it's a great adjunct. It helps tremendously uh, for, in terms of ergonomics, in terms of radiation exposure to yourself, in terms of ease of access, torqueability, pushability, shorter delivery and catheter systems. But remember, not only CFA, but also proximal SFA. I mean, that's a very good access point and can be used safely in a lot of patients. I think also when you're crossing, remember about distal SFA access. That's something you can do as well to help you uh, when you're dealing with complex uh, CTOs, whether they're calcified or non-calcified. And, you know, sometimes when you have an occluded stent and you can't get through that stent from above, remember a modified Schmidt procedure. I think this is well described, you know. Andre and these guys showed, showed this to us years ago, and, and I think it's something that can be done very easily and safely, as we all know. Another one that's used, and, and I, I kind of reserve this really for limb salvage cases. This is not something I would do in a patient who typically has, you know, claudication, uh, who's failed medical management in an in a exercise program. But it's something that can be done very safely, and I think your angle of entry is important, important in this case. You don't want to be too steep with your angle because your wire can get sheared, but it is an important access point. Obviously, pedal access in terms of a DP or an AT and a PT is something we all know, so I'm not even going to show you that. And then uh, this is uh, some slides from a good friend of mine, uh, Miguel Montero Baker, is a vascular surgeon in Houston, uh, in terms of TP trunk access, P3 access and it can be done safely. But remember, if you're unable to deliver your therapy and you've accessed these vessels at this, you know, this high or this proximal in the lower leg, that the compartments are larger, your risk for compartment syndrome and other problems uh, goes up. And then obviously in the cases of limb salvage, I've used these types of access, digital artery uh, and, and really distal access to really help me with really advanced limb salvage and kind of no options patients. 
You all are very familiar with the CTO crossing technique. These are well described in the coronary literature, as we know. Um, and then we all are, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the CTO crossing systems. I'm not going to go through all these, but remember these add cost to what you're doing. And uh, they, they obviously have, uh, each one has its own issues and challenges to deal with when you're trying to get through CTOs. Reentry devices, we have all these. This is a nice list that you can look up on your own and figure out how best to handle things. So let's look at two cases before I end here. I'll go as fast as I can because we got, we're, we're short on time. But here's a classic CLTI patient that came to my office, and you can see they've got superimposed infection. That green stuff you're seeing is classic pseudomonas infection, as you all know. And you can see this patient has a really densely, densely calcified SFA and popliteal artery as well as tibials. So looking at this, looking at the angiogram, you know, I knew that I would not only have to have access from above, whether it's anagrade or up and over, but also I'm going to have to stick the foot. And you can, you can decide on whether you want to stick an occluded tibial vessel to go up, like Dr. Manzi did earlier in the morning, or whether you're going to stick that single vessel runoff. <clears throat> so in this case, obviously, I went from above. I actually stuck the posterior tibial artery because it was a pretty robust vessel, had a good size. It was at least three millimeters or greater under ultrasound. And you can see that I knew that I was going to ultimately be subintimal for a good length of this. And you can see from above, I'm clearly subintimal. From below, I'm obviously intraluminal for uh, the normal segment there. And then I, I'm meeting in the middle, as you all know. And then we have a, a bunch of variations that we can do. We can do cart, reverse cart. We've got uh, double balloon techni uh, technique, or otherwise known as safari, to access. Ultimately, was able to get through and through. And you know, like I've shown this case before, you can see that I didn't put a scaffold in. And you can say, well, that's not a beautiful angiographic result. But the point is, is that it's so heavily calcified that it was hard to get good luminal gain. So I decided not to stent, and we did DCB. But you can see we have a nice angiographic wound blush, which is a good CLI endpoint. We've got physiologic improvement with an ABI that went from 0.45 to 0.92. And you can see we cleared the infection, and we got interval, significant interval healing. So finally, here's another case. You can see he's got a, a deep ulceration here in the lateral part of the foot. This is a classic no-option CLTI patient who now, you know, we would tackle the tibials and probably do pedal loop and all this, but now we have other things we can do like deep venous arterialization and so forth. So we have different options now, and the algorithm of when these things fit and when to do them is changing, as we all know. You can see, again, another near, it's, you know, distal pop, but it's really the origins are all occluded. There's a little reconstitution that posterior tibial artery. So again, I'm looking at the angiogram. I'm looking at the cap morphology. I'm deciding, do I do anagrade? Do I do retrograde? So what am I going to do here? I know I, I got to have dual access. So we stuck the occluded uh, uh, DP uh, and AT segment here to go up. You can see with EVIS or extravascular ultrasound, you can really see this stuff really well. And, and this is something Fadi and everybody has shown over the years. And then once we got there, we got to the top, we thought, oh, wow, I've definitely recanalized this in really less than 30 seconds. This case, part of it's almost done. And then you realize you're in two different subintimal planes. So now the decision point comes to, what do I do? I have two strategies here. You know, I mean, I think everybody thinks of this strategy. Let me do CART or reverse CART or some variation of it. Or, and as I, I'll show you here, we used a three millimeter balloon from above, and then obviously we're able to get through and through access, externalize the wire, and then deliver therapy. But I think another one that's really helpful and has really helped me over the years is navi bossing. So for those that don't know what it is, it's really it's a 035 navi cross catheter. And you can see you're basically, if you look at that far left image, you are basically creating a dissection plane and trying to disrupt those, that's, that septum that's between these two separate subintimal recanalization uh, systems in order to achieve through and through access. You eventually res res uh, reverse your access. In this case, I did good vessel prep when, in terms of using uh, orbital atherectomy, very aggressive with it. But typically, I'll have a sheath distally. I open the sheath, let the debris wash out. So your risk of distal embolization is really low. Obviously, low pressure, prolonged angioplasty. And then you can see now we've got some good hibernating vessels below the ankle. We did a little bit of additional vessel prep. Again, nice CLI endpoint, right? Nice angiographic wound blush, and then able to get significant healing. So hopefully that'll give you a good intro into Eric's talk. Thank you.